straps look a little wrinkled um, they have already been in use um, but I'm gonna show you what I do to get my muzzle halter combination ready for um, one of my horses I have two horses that I own and a few others that I look after that all wear grazing muzzles and they are turned out in a herd of about 10 to 15 horses on 30 acres so they really put grazing muzzles to the test and they definitely need them on so they're wearing them 24-7 uh, throughout most of the year so I like to be really preemptive with all the things that I do to keep them from getting rubbed but also um, keep them from re removing their muzzles or running into safety issues so I'm going to take you through my entire process um, you might not have to do all of these things or might not want to do all of these things but if you want to um, Houdini proof and um, my guys have a lot of friends that try and chew on things and try to help them remove their muzzle or break different parts of their halter um, so if you want to be really preemptive for things like that then this is the video for you um, I'm also going to show you some things to do to prevent rubs and things like that as well First thing that I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my pony protector stickers. Um, those are a lot easier to put on if there are no straps on it yet. So you want to make sure that your muzzle is nice and clean. Um, so I've cleaned this and even buffed out a few little places that had um, some little scratches in it. And um, I'm going to do the pink on the green because I think it's fun. You can obviously choose whatever color combination you like. And I'm going to start by doing the inside sticker. And I try to line it up just above those top holes right there. And the stickers are pretty forgiving. They'll kind of mold around. I like to press them down really well. And you want to fold them over like that. And if you don't have the stickers and you're using um, duct tape, uh, that's fine too. I, I like to do this for the chin. Um, preemptively because once they get a little rub on their chin or maybe just even if they lose the hair um, it's really hard for that to come back um, so I like to do it even if they're not getting rubs just to kind of prevent that chin hair from getting rubbed off um, especially for guys that are wearing them 24 7 in turnout I think it just kind of helps because most of them their chin kind of rubs across those holes and it's gonna get a little worn down even if it's not causing actual um, rubs so then you place this one out here smooth it on bend that down I like to kind of crease those edges so they stay folded over just press everything down so it's nice and smooth because if you can keep uh, water and dew and stuff from getting down in the stickers they'll stay on a lot longer so that's the first step <clears throat> the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my uh, muzzle straps so it doesn't matter what order you start, but if you have the kind of rough side of the strap facing up and you're going to go from outside to in on um, this one, this is the side, and then you want to make sure you use the back keeper and you can set this up before you attach it to the halter. The back keeper is just a little loop that's on the back side of the buckle and when you send the tail through, it holds it in place um, and it keeps 
these straps from being open loops like this, um, which get caught on things. And a lot of times if there's other horses out in the field, they will grab a hold of that um, and help remove it. Or um, it can, you know, it just leaves your horse open to getting caught on things and open to injury or at the very least breaking your muzzle strap. So I'm gonna go all the way around and do these with the sides, the front right here. Um, something I did not mention is you wanna make sure that your muzzle is oriented so that the front, there are three slots across and not five. This is the side, this is the front, um, and this is the back where I put the sticker. And you'll also, you can know the front because it um, has the raised green guard logo right there. So I went ahead and put the back, put that through the back keeper there. And I'm gonna do one more. I wanted to do a longer version of the setting up the muzzle video so that you could just kind of do it along with me. Um, and so that you could see how I actually do it um, for my actual horses. So I've got these set up. So I actually do something a little different for the back one because typically the back one is a lot shorter. Um, so I actually go backwards so that the buckle lays here because if it's really short and it's here, sometimes that buckle can get right up against your horse's skin. Um, so I'm actually not going to attach this to the muzzle first. I'm gonna go a little rogue and attach it to my halter first. So, as you can see, this halter has been worn a time or two. So this is the underside of my halter. Um, this is towards their nose, that's towards their throat. So I'm going to go through and through my back keeper, just like I would with the muzzle, but I'm starting at the halter. And now I'm gonna hold the muzzle like this. And, and you don't have to do this, but I like to do it because typically to get the angle correct, um, your back strap is gonna be pretty short. So then I can send it through the muzzle and buckle it nice and tight. And this ensures that the buckle is on the other side of the plastic um, and not coming up. Because sometimes when it's this short, it can come up through that hole and kind of poke them in the chin. And then it kind of sits flat right there. And then I'm gonna go through the regular keeper and I have that. So again, a lot of times on these um, back ones, you'll have this long tail. And so I definitely recommend trimming it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this one. And then I also, um, I also actually tape all the tails down because like I said, my horses have friends that try and help them remove things. Um, so I try to be really preemptive about that. Okay, so now I have the back one attached. And typically, like I said, the back one's pretty short. Um, it's on like, I don't know, the third or fourth hole. Um, or wait, no, it's on like, yeah, I think it's on the third hole, second or third hole. And then here I'm gonna do, um, from the end, I'm gonna do four holes up. Actually, I'm gonna do five. I think that looks a little better. Um, <clears throat> and before you tape anything down on these straps, you want to make sure that you have um, tried it on your horse and you have the angle correct. If you ever have any questions about the angle or the fit, um, just snap a picture of it on your horse directly from the side so that we can kind of see through the holes and that will allow us to check the fit and the angle and um, help you uh, figure out if you have that correct. So um, somewhere kind of in the middle for the side ones is pretty normal. And then for the front one, you're gonna go up through this ring right here. And the front is usually a little longer than the back one and the side one. So I'm gonna go to hole number, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna go to hole number three. So a rule of thumb is the sides are usually like 
three or four holes longer than the back and then the front is like two more but that like super depends on your horse's face shape so um you know definitely go by what the angle looks like so now i have the front and now i'm gonna do the side and you want the two sides to be equal um unless your horse has a really lopsided head that you want so i'm gonna so that's on the fifth hole from the tail. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So now I have that. And you want to make sure you send all these tails through the outside keeper. Just like that. And now we have a muzzle on a halter. So that's what it looks like. Um, this is typically the angle that should get me pretty close to fitting um, most of the horses that I use these on. But again, your horse might be different, so um, don't just go by the, the holes that I'm using because everyone's face is shaped a little differently. So now that I have that done, the next thing that I'm gonna do is, um, assuming this angle is correct for my horse, I'm going to start adding the corner straps. So this is a new product um, and you can use baling twine to do this. I like these Velcro straps um, because they grab onto uh, the nylon halter. Um, even if it's not one of our halters, they kind of grab onto it so they don't slide back and forth. Um, the other thing I really like about having these is if you have all four all the way around and you do break one of these straps, a lot of times these will provide enough structure to keep the muzzle on them correctly until um, you can get that strap replaced. I've had a horse come in with missing one of its side buckles, but the two corner straps were holding it right in place and it was grazing as if he wasn't missing a strap. So it just kind of adds a little security, especially if you have a horse that um, would be in danger because if they got their muzzle off because they have like a metabolic issue. Um, all right, so with the corner straps, you want, again, assuming that this angle is correct, you want to kind of pull it um, as far as it will go with the straps on because you don't want these um, corner straps to be pulling your nose band down and holding the weight. You want the weight to be on these. straps are it looks like I might have these buckles just a hair too long because um, this is going right back on the same horse that all this stuff was on before just with a different muzzle basket so I'm gonna put my keeper at the top
in this back corner, you tend to have a lot more, um, a lot more strap to work with because these, uh, the muzzle straps aren't as long back here. So you're not blocking as large of a distance. But you can see that my straps are kind of warped. Um, and that, that is because they have been in the mouths of all of the pasture friends. Um, they play pretty rough. So just a little bit tighter. And I like the uh, Velcro because it's pretty easy to readjust if you don't get it quite right. Um, and it's also, this side is really fuzzy. So, um, so far we haven't had any issues with it rubbing them, which if you're using baling twine to do this, I, I always recommend um, covering where whatever strap you use, covering that with um, electric tape or Gorilla tape or something smooth, especially if you're using like baling twine because that can cause rubs or um, zip ties. Um, and the other thing about zip ties is the pointy ends of those can be really dangerous to other horses. Um, or you, if you're leading your horse in and they rub you with their muzzle that has a zip tie sticking out on it. So just, you know, make sure you tape those down so they aren't um, poking anyone's eyes out. <clears throat> All right, we got one last corner strap. you may not have to do all of this for your horses but I have to do it for mine because they are a little extra special when it comes to having their grazing muzzles on and they're like I said they're out on um, 30 acres of Kentucky bluegrass um, and they are not thoroughbreds they are well some of them are but um, my two that I own are draft crosses and so they're very easy keepers so it's really important that they have a grazing muzzle on Okay, so now we have a halter with a muzzle attached and we have eight straps all the way around. Um, and once you get this on, you can kind of see, it looks like the leather straps are holding most of the weight of the muzzle, which is perfect. These you want them to kind of span that length, but not be, um, not be pulling the nose band out of whack at all. So those look pretty good to me. Um, so I'm actually just gonna leave them exactly how they are. So that's all the stuff that goes on. Now I'm gonna show you what I do to kind of pony proof this. Um, because again, my horses are monsters and they like to help each other destroy anything that they're wearing. Um, and my favorite product to use is electric tape. I like it because it kind of molds to things. Um, it's smooth and it also kind of blends in with the strap so it doesn't look like you have a bunch of um, tape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut myself a few little uh, three inch strips because I'm gonna be using quite a few of these. And you can get the, you can get electric tape in some fun colors. Okay, I'm back. I've cut myself several little like three-ish inch, um, some longer, some shorter, um, things of electric tape. So the first place that I like to tape is um, around this front buckle because it is very long it tends to kind of sit open a little bit. And this is a potential spot for rubbing or a friend <laughs> grabbing onto it. And then I also like to tape the tail um, to make sure it doesn't come out of that keeper. So I'm gonna tape around the tail. So basically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be putting at least two strips of electric tape around each of the straps. Um, you don't have to do this, but I am actually going to electric tape over my Velcro keepers. Top and bottom. Again, I'm gonna 
tape just below where it attaches to the halter. And then I'm gonna tape again. I'm gonna tape the tail um, and I'm actually gonna trim just that little bit off. So I don't like it to hang down much lower than that because it will end up in someone's mouth. <laughs> so I'm gonna tape that. Go over my other keeper. because it is so short, um, I'm actually just gonna do one and make sure that buckle tab is down and then I'm gonna do one right there. First muzzle rodeo, um, and I know my horses, so they definitely need all of this. And even with these taped, they still um, they still are breakaway. They'll still break under pressure. Um, myself a few um, holes in case I do need to lengthen or shorten it or swap buckles around. Um, and something else to keep in mind is that the, um, the leather parts, if your horse is in an area where um, it's rainy at all and they get wet and then dry, especially while they're still wearing them, um, a lot of times the leather can stretch out. So you may have to shorten um, like your crown piece or even your muzzle straps. Just double check that those are still a good length. All right, so I've now gone around the last of my straps. We have all the straps taped and trimmed and there's nothing um, sticking out for anyone to grab on. Um, and so that is how I assemble my muzzle. So the last thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to tape over the intersection of the front and the back strap. Um, I do this because sometimes they get rubs there and so I like to just tape over that part. tape and kind of mold it down and around. I'm going to do one more strip just below that one. The 
way that I did the back buckle here, I actually really like um, because it allows the strap to sit a little bit more flush also. Um, so I'm not gonna tape over that buckle. I'm just gonna do it like that. And I'll show you from the inside. like from the inside I've just kind of taped over where those intersect and I'm gonna do one more little strip right there I don't know if you can see that from that angle gets nose rubs instead of chin rubs or if they get both you can use those pony protectors on the front side also um, but this is kind of my rub and Houdini proof um, setup that I do for my guys I hope this was helpful and that I went slow enough so you could kind of go along with me um, but yeah happy grazing and I hope that this setup helps you and your horse um, enjoy their grazing muzzle